welcome to my channel, Paul Ames Visual Journalist. And today I'm talking about lenses suitable for bird photography for users of um, full frame cameras and um, APS-C or cropped format cameras. Um, last video I put up was about the uh, Panasonic uh, Leica 100-400 and how that was a good choice for birding um, for uh, micro four thirds. This today I am looking at the Sigma 150 to 600 5.6 to 6.3 DG OS contemporary lens. What a mouthful! Now, confusingly, Sigma make two lenses at this focal range and uh, they are labeled the sport and the contemporary. Now, essentially the difference between the two is that the uh, sport has a slightly different optical construction, which means it is slightly better and it has better weather sealing. It's a kilogram heavier and $1,200 Australian more expensive. This means that I think that the um, contemporary this lens here is probably more suitable for beginners and the more budget conscious for looking to take up bird photography. It's part of Sigma's global vision line of lenses, which means that it's compatible with the uh, Sigma TC1401 1.4 times teleconverter and which allows uh, autofocus to work at a, a maximum of f8 wide open if your camera supports this feature. What this really means is when you have a um, DSLR, you have a mirror in the way of the sensor between the sensor and the le rear lens element. Now this mirror is slightly uh, what they call semi-silvered, which allows some light to go through and um, be transferred down to a, um, a auto-focusing module in the base of the mirror box. Now if there isn't enough light to get through, it doesn't work. And the camera manufacturers have decided that F8 is the absolute um, minimum that uh, allows the right amount of light in to get uh, accurate autofocus. I don't know about how Nikon goes about this. Canon, um, they only have a few cameras that are, enable this F8 autofocus and they are off the top of my head. The Canon 80D, the 7D Mark II, the 6D Mark II, the 5D Mark III and IV, and the 1DX Mark II. They will all allow F8 autofocus. What's the big deal, I hear you ask? Well, if you combine the um, teleconverter with this lens on your camera, then on a full frame camera, you'll get 860 millimeters of reach, or on the crop cameras, you'll get um, just under 1500 millimeters of reach, which is a big deal and um, is not bad for a um, lens and converter combination costing around the 2000 Australian dollar mark. I didn't look at it because none of my cameras support the F8 focusing. So when we look at this lens, physically it is a big lens. It is large. It stands head and shoulders above my Canon 70-200 f2.8, which in itself is considered a large heavy lens. Not only is it taller, the Sigma is also half a kilo heavier. Now, Sigma lifts the official weight of this lens as, um, I've got it written down somewhere, 1.93 kilograms. But that's pretty well stripped back. If you weigh it with the lens hood and the tripod collar on and a lens cap and a body cap, it is a, a whopping great 2.1 kilos. Okay. So when you pick it up, the first thing that comes to apart, mind apart from the weight and the size is that it's plastic. 
don't tell Sigma that. They get a bit defensive about this. They don't call it plastic. They call it thermally stable composite. And they say that their thermally stable composite is substantially stronger than conventional polycarbonates while having a similar thermal expansion property to aluminium. Why is that important? Well, underneath this, dare I say, plastic outer, there is an aluminium subassembly which holds all the lens mechanism, the lens elements, the motors, the optical stabilization system in place. And if, when the lens gets hot, um, both the outer shell and the inner subassembly don't expand and contract at the same rate, it could mean that the lens elements get misaligned and you'll have trouble focusing. So that's quite a good feature. The other thing as to the construction is, if we look at the back here, there is a machined brass mount that is chromium plated and that's attached very firmly. There's no play, slop or wobble. And if we look at that a bit more carefully, we can see on the outside a rubber gasket or O-ring. And this is your weather sealing on this lens. Sigma advertised that the lens is dust and weather sealed, but in reality, that is the only sealing in place. There is no sealing at any other point along the lens body inside. So this means that if you want something that is truly weatherproof and dustproof, you will have to spring for the sport version of the lens. If we look at the lens on the outside and just talk about its construction a little bit more and the physical controls, um, up front you have got a 95 millimeter um, filter thread on that large front element. Yeah, as we move back, we see there is a large rubber ribbed ring, which uh, is the zoom ring. And this has a 160 degree throw. It's smooth, a bit on the stiff side, but not difficult to use, feels nice not loose or sloppy. As you can see, when turning it, the lens extends quite considerably. And as it does, that subsection that extends outwards, there is no slop or wiggle in there. It all feels firm, rigid and good. Um, locking switch to uh, lock the lens at the 150 millimeter range for transport or storage. This is to prevent zoom creep. However, I have found with this lens that it's not really needed. Back again is a narrow rubber ribbed ring for focus. And that um, has no hard stops at either end, which is um, not good if you're into video. Um, make manual focusing video not impossible but just a little bit harder back again is a uh, window with a focusing scale in feet and meters and just below that on the side there is a panel of four switches the four switches are um, at the top you have the focus controls so you have autofocus what Sigma calls um, MO or manual override and off. The manual override one is quite an interesting little feature because what that means is that when you switch to that um, you can initially find focus using the autofocus system with a touch of the shutter button or the back button focus and then if you need to fine tune your focus after that you can turn the focusing ring and it will let you do that. So that's quite neat. Below that is a focus limiter switch. And that gives you three options as well. You have full range, which is 2.8 meters to infinity, 10 meters to infinity, and 2.8 meters to 10 meters. That is probably the most um, useful one for birding 
in that um, I tend to take pictures of a, a lot of small birds um, that move very quickly in the bush and the undergrowth. And uh, it's usually at around the three to five meter distance. And so this enables the lens to um, focus very quickly because it doesn't have to go through the whole focusing range um, to find autofocus. It's just the, that reduced range, so it acquires very quickly. It's very neat, I like it. Underneath that is the optical stabilization switch. And that's got three choices on it as well. Um, on, which gives you compensation for movement in the vertical and the um, horizontal plane. The next one is um, a panning mode. So there you just get um, compensation in the vertical plane, which means that as you pan with a subject, the um, stabilization unit isn't trying to work against that movement and introducing all kinds of juddering and jarring into the lens elements as it's trying to overcompensate. And off is the final position for that. And lastly, um, there is a custom button switch. Now I haven't had chance to uh, uh, explore this because I don't have a Sigma FD11 USB dock. But if you do and you download the um, software from Sigma, um, what you'll find is that you can fine tune the parameters on things like um, the autofocus speed and the optical stabilization. And you can set custom modes and that switch will allow you to store and access two custom modes on the uh, lens. As I said, I've not had chance to play with it. Yeah, back from that, we have the tripod collar. Tripod collar freely rotates 360 degrees. Um, and then it allows you when the camera is mount, uh, when the lens is mounted onto a tripod, you can rotate the camera using this. Um, so your camera can be either in the vertical or the horizontal orientation for pictures. Uh, the collar does detach for those people who are only going to hand hold the lens. And um, you can see on the lens body, there are a series of lugs around the uh, body that the uh, collar attaches to. Now Sigma uh, provide a ring, a rubber ring, I don't have it here, um, that will slide over that so it gives a nice smooth finish. It's just a cosmetic thing, it doesn't serve any real practical value, but it's just a sign that um, Sigma are paying attention to detail and are thinking about what the user's experience will be like when they use the lens. When we look at the tripod collar, some manufacturers now with the uh, tripod collars, they are machining the foot of the collar so it is compatible um, directly with the Arca Swiss system of um, ball heads. Um, so you don't have to put a, a, an adapter plate on it. Um, not a big deal for me as I use the Manfrotto system, not the Arca one. So I was going to put a plate on it anyway. It all fits into place quite neatly. The lens comes with a lens hood. Canon and Olympus, take note. You are very naughty because on you only get lens hoods with certain numbers of with certain lenses, usually the more expensive Mark lenses, and uh, pro these uh, you have to spring for uh, a lens hood extra. And um, I broke the lens hood for my Canon EF twenty millimeter two point eight the other day. And I looked online for a replacement for it, and the list price is 84 Australian dollars, which is outrageous. Anyway, you'll be pleased to know that um, 
Sigma provide a nice deep plastic hood. It's quite sturdy. Um, nice touch is it's ribbed on the inside, which means that light entering the hood can't reflect off the sides and bounce into the uh, front lens element. So that's quite nice. And it just bayonets on the front, like so. Makes the lens look even bigger again. But it's quite nice. Another nice touch is, and Olympus and Canon take note, Sigma provide you with a very, very nice padded lens case with a strap. And so all that makes you feel that you are getting a lot for your money. It is good value. So that's a nice job. Nice job on Sigma's part there. The optical construction of the lens is 20 elements in 14 groups with one FLD element and three SLD elements. The FLD element, or F-low dispersion glass, offers performance equivalent to fluorite. Now, Canon and other manufacturers have used synthetically grown crystals of calcium fluoride components in lenses to aid apochromatic design and to reduce light, reduce light dispersion so lenses made from it exhibit less chromatic aberration. What Sigma has done is use newer glasses and computer-aided design to re render the use of the fluorite crystals unnecessary. The three SLD, or special low dispersion glass elements, also help to minimize chromatic aberration. In terms of optical performance, at the 150mm end, the centre of the lens wide open was sharp and contrasty and stayed as such until f22 when it softened due to the effects of diffraction. At the edges, the peak performance was attained at f11 and remained until f22 when it softened again. At 600mm, the centre wide open was a little soft and lacking in contrast. This improved a lot by f8 and then deteriorated again at f22, diffraction rearing its ugly head yet again. The edges weren't so good. Wide open they were soft and lacking in contrast and remained so until f22 when they got worse. The only difference between the performance on the crop sensor and the full frame camera comes down to vignetting. As you'd expect, the vignetting was worse on the uh, full frame 6D and it's around one to one and a half stops, which is totally understandable as you're using the whole frame rather than just the central part of the lens coverage. I tested the autofocus capability of the Sigma 150 to 600 on a Canon EOS 6D and 550D to see how it would perform on both crop and full frame cameras. Now in terms of AF performance, as neither of those cameras have what can be considered state of the art AF systems, the lens did very well. The single point AF using the center point was fast and precise and well capable of fixing on small birds amongst foliage. In terms of continuous AF on the EOS 550D, the camera was definitely the limitation, being only able to shoot six frame bursts in RAW. But out of my six shots when tracking my dog trotting, five of the six would be in focus. The 6D is able to shoot four and a half frames per second for 15 frames, and on the Trotting Bull Terrier test, it managed 12 frames in focus. I'm sure if you put the uh, lens on a better camera, you would get much better results. So what does all this mean in real life? All these optical charts and tests of the AF system and all this sort of thing. Well, when it comes down to practical usage, if we look at the image of the new Holland Honey Eater, which I'll pop on the screen now, um, I took this at a distance of around three and a half to four meters um, in my garden. And if you look at it at 
you can see there is really nice feather detail. And this is important, I feel, in bird photography that, um, you know, you don't want the feathers to just uh, look a blurry mess. Um, you want to see the detail of that. And if we, again, if we look at the eye, the eye is sharp, really sharp. It's really good. It's really done well, even shooting wide open. So, conclusions. To get much better, um, I think you'd have to spend an awful lot of money. I really would. I think you'd be having to look at buying an expensive prime lens from like a Canon or Nikon. Um, for example, if you look at it, this is 600mm at the long end. If you look at Canon's 600mm f4 lens, that has an eye-watering price of 18500 Australian dollars. That's 11 times the cost of the Sigma. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. And um, you'd have to be really sure about your involvement in bird photography to plonk down that kind of cash. I know personally, if I did it, I'd be heading for the divorce court, which would make the Canon a very expensive lens indeed. So all up, for what the Sigma costs, it is amazing value and has very good performance. Now... Before I go, I'm going to put up a um, slideshow of photos taken both on my 6D and my 550D so you can get an idea of what it's capable about in different situations, different light, different birds. And um, yeah, and at this point I'd like to say uh, goodbye and thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.